Hello everyone, welcome to the very first episode of the 12 minute AI game development challenge. I will be using something called Cursor, and for those of you who are not familiar with it, it is an AI powered code editor that helps you build applications really, really quickly, thanks to the power of AI. And in today's episode, we will be building the game of Snake. Now, I'm sure you must be thinking to yourself, there are so many videos out there already showing you how you can build Snake in a very short amount of time using Cursor or other AI tools. But what's different about today's video is that we'll be building it full stack. This means we'll be adding a backend component to our game such that you'll be able to do things like authenticate a player and allow them to submit and try to beat their high scores and you'll be able to see a global leaderboard as well. We will be using Phaser as our game engine and Superbase as our backend. All these great tools, frameworks and AI, getting it all done in under 12 minutes is going to be quite a stretch. However, I think this makes this interesting and a bit of a challenge and also serves to demonstrate what can be possible. Well, without further ado, let's get going. All right, we're almost ready to get started. But before we do so, I think what I'll do is I'll quickly give an overview of how the code base has been set up. Uh, we'll be building upon this throughout this video to get to the end state. So the first thing we see here is just a phaser scene. And this is what is rendering what you see on the right hand side of the, of the screen. And this will continue to be updated live as we uh, proceed with the challenge. Then the next thing we have is just some very, very simple boilerplate code that connects to our backend. Uh, we're using Superbase for our backend. And the reason why we have a backend is that we actually want aspects of our game to persist beyond a single session. The purpose of this video is really so that we can get to a state where we have a fully functioning game, yes, but also a bit of the bells and whistles that make the game feel complete. So a main menu, a pause screen, and this backend system here is really like the key thing that we want to see whether we can get to. A couple of other things just very quickly. So we have a cursor rules set up here. And for those of you who do not know what a cursor rules file is, it's effectively something like a system prompt, right? It's something that teaches cursor how to instruct and provide responses. There are a lot of great tutorial videos out there that help to explain what kind of cursor rules files should be. And maybe in a separate video, we can talk through uh, this in more detail, but just wanted to highlight that. And the last thing is that we have something called a GDD uh, markdown file. And this GDD markdown file will be the point in which we describe the aspects of the game that we're trying to build. One thing about AI assisted coding is that you're describing more of the what rather than the how. And this is like a forcing function, what you want your game to be like rather than how you want to implement it, because that's what the, the AI code is going to do. Okay, so anyway, let's get right into the challenge. So we have 12 minutes. I'll try to get to as much of the functionality as possible. Done this a few times and 12 minutes is, is, is just about enough to having the mechanics and, and the online functionality, but it is a bit of a stretch. And I think that's the whole point of this challenge and we'll see if this works. All right, so I think it's about time we get started. So I'm gonna start the timer and we will be starting from this GDD document. All right, let's go. Three, two, one, let's go. All right, so to start off with, we're just gonna do a high level description. So this is gonna be a clone of the popular game Snake. Uh, in terms of game mechanics, you know, we want to be able to control the Snake. We want to uh, define some win-lose conditions and some rules about how the game starts. In terms of visuals, we're going for a retro um, style uh, using simple shapes and graphics, uh, just so just for expediency. We also define some UI elements that we want uh, and, uh, and, and things that we want to display to the player. In terms of game controls, very simple. Uh, be able to, uh, you know, move the, uh, move the Snake around uh, hence have contro some controls for the menu screen. Uh, and then for the game flow, uh, we just want to define how you start from the menu, go into the game, log out, and things related to uh, the user journey. And finally, this is uh, the crucial piece, um, how the backend system uh, should work. So we want to persist information across sessions. We want to store the player's name uh, and things related to our uh, online services. This will really serve the leaderboard. And so uh, this is forms the basis of that. So we open up uh, the composer menu, make sure to select agent and this is how I kind of like to uh, prompt uh, cursor so first of all I'm going to say you know with the goal implement the game design based in uh, sorry game based on the design in GDD and then I will say start off by building the basic features in small increments so we can test as we develop now this is really important right um, I forgot to actually run the server so let's just keep this running and you can see uh, localhost will, will continue to um, run here 
Um, and like I was saying, it's really important to do things iteratively. I think just the approach of building software and games in particular is that you don't try to do the functionality all in one shot. You kind of like do the basic controls, basic, get something on screen, get something moving, and then you build on top of that. That's kind of like a better approach, especially when you're working with AI-assisted code, where it can sometimes just make massive changes to your code base without you realizing. All right, so here we go. We actually have a snake moving um, on the screen already. Uh, while it's fixing the linter errors, I just want to show you I'm using the arrow keys and it's really moving around the screen. That's great. Um, and uh, a couple of things that you can see that's happening is that it is colliding with the edges of the screen, but it's not immediately obvious. I'm just going to try and make this a bit smaller. And you can see like, you know, it, it has like edges of the screen that, um, that it collides with, but it's not uh, doing much well after that. So we probably have to add a clearer border and the resetting is not working. So we'll fix these things um, uh, as we go along. And we can see that uh, Cursor is already trying to uh, fix a couple of things in the game. So I'm going to preempt this. I'm going to say um, uh, add more a clear, a visually clear borders, right? And then uh, I'm going to say um, uh, game uh, when a game over occurs, resetting is not working correctly. Uh, as Snake cannot move. So let's see if we can fix those bugs. We want to get the main aspects of the game fixed before we add more functionality. Um, so uh, let's just like uh, see um, how this fares. Um, I'm going to refresh the game one more time. Uh, usually this, uh, this is all about state management. Um, the visuals should be very, very easy to get going, uh, but at least there's some basic functionality. But we've just, uh, you know, hit over, I think, three minutes. So we should begin to uh, you know, uh, hurry up a little and get more of the functionality in. Um, so we got the clear borders coming in now, and let's see if the game over works correctly. Yeah, it resets and it, and uh, and you know, like you no longer get stuck anymore. Oh, great! So uh, it all looks right. I would say um, uh, implement the next features, um, and let's see what the next features are. I usually I think what it'll do is that it'll try to like do something like food and scoring. Yeah, so food spawning, growth, and score tracking and collision. Self collision, so collision collision with themselves. So uh, while this is ongoing, uh, I'm just going to play around with the, uh, with the game on the right hand side to see if there's anything that's, that's broken. Uh, I don't really like this red border, but we'll, we'll deal with it for now. Um, and while it's implementing and it's, uh, thinking, uh, you know, I think we can begin, uh, you know, like looking at how far we've gotten um, in terms of the code that's been generated. Um, one thing to note is that when you are using AI assisted code, uh, you actually don't really look at the code that is generated too much. Um, uh, especially when you're doing a challenge like this. And that's actually uh, fairly dangerous because, you know, it's actually really important to stay on top of what changes are, are happening. But, uh, you know, uh, you will see when we start doing the backend stuff, like that's usually where the AI uh, coding really like messes things up. But uh, let's just continue on here. Okay, so I can see the collision with the, with the, with the food is not really working correctly. So I'll say bug um, collision with food is not registering. And let's make sure that that's working. But um, can, yeah, I tried colliding with myself. Uh, you, it's probably not obvious, but I'm colliding with myself and it does uh, end the game there. There is a score now, but because of the collision logic, it's not incrementing the score. So we need to fix that as well. All right, we've got just over seven minutes left. So that's quite a stretch. We still have to do, uh, you know, the menu screens, the pause screens and the backend stuff. And the backend stuff is usually where, you know, things really, really trip up. And the, the screen is really small. So I'm going to try to at least make it a bit bigger now. Yeah, that was a bit small. So hopefully this is a bit more clear. Uh, let's accept the changes um, and see if the collision is working because that's really important uh, and why is this food so far away all right so that seems to be fine there is some like artifacts um with 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 how the thing is rendering um all right so i'll just say um there are some artifacts uh after eating food like the snake is broken let's see if we can fix this bug i've never seen this bug before but i think it's quite important to fix this thing like i said uh it's really important to make sure that we get to a state where um you know we are able to you know really feel like the game the core of the game is there before adding the bells and whistles all right um so that seems to be going okay so it's just gonna like so it says it's not handling snake movement and the food like so let's see if this really works all right let's 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 try it now uh, if this doesn't work, what I'll do, yeah, okay, so it seems a lot better now. There seems to be a, like, a rendering offset issue, which is a little bit annoying, but that's fine. Let's move on to the next uh, aspect. So, um, so from for the value flow, like, uh, at uh, the main, okay, so what we're going to do is that like, we're going to do at the main uh, menu screen and game over screen as per the GDD. So, um, let me check the, yeah, so it's going to check the DDD and it's going to implement the menu screens. Now, this is really important because the menu screen really helps to uh, regulate 
um, you know, the authentication. And authentication is when like a user logs in, you know, and stores their their, their name and their and their uh, scores onto the uh, on, onto the database. So uh, that's that's usually what helps a lot um, when you're when you're building a game like this. Uh, if you try to do uh, you know storing of scores and and things without you know having some kind of screen transition, you know, oftentimes uh, you know it, it can go really wrong. So that's what I found uh, is really useful, which is why we should start doing the menu screens now. Um, and while it's doing that, I'm going to just check a few more things. So like colliding myself, that's do, that's reset the score. Colliding the walls, that's reset the score. Great. So um, all right, the AI coder is still moving along, um, and I'm still not, not too happy about how the rendering looks. But it's fine. I think it's just like you know center oriented versus top left oriented. But let's accept some of these changes and see if a menu screen is coming. And usually what it does is that it builds the menu screen, and then after that it um, after that it then uh, starts to uh, uh, link up the, uh, the the flow. So we've got five minutes left. We still have the back end to do. This is going to be a bit of a stretch uh, from what I can tell, but let's see. Okay, great. So there is a good menu screen now. So we have play as guest sign with Google. I don't think we'll get to Google Auth, but let's see if guest works. All right. So coming in, all right, eat the food. Okay, game over. I hit the wall. All right, that didn't work. Oh, because I hit the edge of the wall already. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's go. All right, so that's fine. Okay, good. All right, so... All right. You notice the score doesn't persist across sessions. So now let's actually, um, you know, implement uh, the back end because that's the way that we can actually, uh, you know, uh, have the scores, uh, scores actually start in the back end. And also I want to have the player name uh, because if uh, the player's name is not here, I don't even know uh, if, if we're logged in or not. And this is usually where things really break with, uh, with, uh, with AI assisted coding, uh, especially when you start linking with the back end and start doing things that uh, require third party integration. Um, so this is where I'll also uh, highlight what it's doing. So it's creating, it's telling me to create uh, tables that we need to have. So um, I should have probably uh, described this further, but uh, this is where we will create the tables on Superbase. So I'm going to have it here, just paste it. So I'm running it. So the main thing that we're doing here on Superbase is that we are creating the tables that are required for uh, the backend to persist. So I ran the script um, and hopefully that works. And I'm just going to switch back to cursor now. Uh, it's still thinking, but the, at the very least, um, you know, you can see the, 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 the tables in Superbase are, have been created. So the players, the scores, and there's a leaderboard. So what we want to see now is that we want to see that um, you know, uh, the player does have a name when, it, when, when we play and the score persists right? um, uh, uh, across, uh, across sessions. So we've got three minutes left. If we can get to this point, uh, I think I'll be quite happy. Uh, okay, let's go. So top scores and the leaderboard. So, okay, so top scores, let's do players guess. Okay, so when this happens, usually there's an uh, issue with, uh, with, with, uh, with the back end. So I can see here it's doing some stuff on the main screen, something to score, and I'm going to have to make this a little bit smaller. All right, let's try. Okay, so whenever I'm trying to create a player, a uh, guest player is, uh, is complaining about this forbidden. So let's just post this into, <laughs> into cursor and see whether they can fix it. Um, more often than not, um, you know, it's to do with like the, the, the queries in the table. And this is where, like I said, a lot of things uh, break. So permission denied. So I can see that there's a sort of permission denied. So it's gonna um, require me to change some things in the back, on the back end. And uh, I have this very handy reset uh, SQL that just resets everything on the back end uh, so that, you know, we can uh, start from scratch, um, you know, and, and because we're prototyping it uh, rapidly, it doesn't matter. You can just wipe all the data. And then I need to then pick up the, the changes that it requires me from uh, init which is fine, and I'll throw it in here, and just run it. Uh, oh, okay, the permission denied the parameter. Okay, so there's something here that it doesn't like. Let's try that again. Um, yeah, this is the problem. I don't know why is it so destructive, but let's let's take this and run it. Run this query. Okay, permission denied off. So I'm just throwing this in here. And this is where it really, really falls apart, right? Whenever, uh, you know, you have to integrate the backend. Like I found like this is where it really um, uh, causes problems. Like it, it just realized that it didn't have to do that. So it's going to fix the init, okay? And uh, hopefully we can get this done quickly because we only have like a minute left. I would really love to persist the scores. I would really love to be able to log in and show like different usernames and things like that. Um, just going to be quick, accept everything. Just a leap of faith, yeah? Um, all right. Oh, let's see if this runs. Run it. That's fine. Okay, now back to cursor. And um, okay, so what we're gonna do is that we refresh this page and then just try to log in as guest. Great, all right, nice. Okay, we have a uh, username, 
Happy Snake Key <laughs> 2. Uh, and then we, let's just see if the score works. Okay, so the score didn't work. I didn't manage to catch that one. There's a lot of little bugs, but let's see if we can get one minute left. If we can get scoring working uh, and start on the database, I'll be really, really happy. So, uh, okay, let's see. I know what I want. I am uh, show the player's best score. Um, so go back to the main menu. Okay, okay. So you can see top scores, right? So at least the leaderboard is working. Um, you know the gas player. Ideally, you would show like the the, the players um, the players uh, score uh, best score uh, on this screen as well. So I think it's going to show it here. Uh, and the other thing is that I I, I hope that when I did uh, play uh, press play as gas again, that it created a new session because otherwise. Uh, you know, it, it will always play. Okay, yeah, so I can see now I'm happy gamer 2e3. Let's try to do that. Let's try to beat my previous score. Um, but we're going to run out of time. But here we go. All right, we're out of time. Let me hit the edge of the screen. And here we go. All right. So um, I am just going to let Cursor do its thing and reach the end. And I think it's a good time to see how far we managed to get at the end of, of this 12-minute uh, coding session. All right, so let's just do a quick, uh, a bunch of quick checks, right? Uh, play as guess. All right, so when we play as guess, we get some random name at the top. Uh, you know, the score is zero. Now it's ten. Uh, my best score is uh, so far has been zero, so that's correct. Uh, oh, how am I going to get this one? It's just uh, impossible to get. Okay, let's try to play again. It shows my best score was ten, which is great. And let's try to beat my previous score. Just see if everything's working well. So Happy Snake L Axis best score should now be uh, forty. All right, I'm just going to uh, crash into myself. Great, 40, play again. Cool, so best scores are showing correctly. Now, let's try something else. Okay, the main menu is there. I'm pressing escape. That works fine. And if I press M, so what I want to check now is that if I press M to go to the main menu and then try to play as guess again, I should get a different name, a different session, and my best score should be resetted. But I should be able to see the leaderboard showing Happy Snake uh, WLX with, with 40. So let's just see. There we go. So that is actually working correctly. I can see that here. Um, and then if I do play as guess, um, okay. So this is the, this is something that I didn't expect. I I guess if I refresh, I, I, what I wanted this to do, but maybe it's actually okay. Is that I was hoping if I go back to the main menu screen, the it allows you to play as a as a new guess. But I think what is done is that it goes based on refreshing the browser. So this is where we can actually just go into the into the code and see what's happening. But um, oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, let's go to the main menu. I'm going to refresh and see if I can get a new name. Okay, great. If I play guess now, okay, Brave Master OPTM, I'm just going to get 10, and then uh, I'm going to crash. Good. I can see that there's an error here around the score, and I think I know what's this. Whenever you see a 406 acceptable, very likely it's because no entries exist on the database because it's a new user, but then there's some logic that assumes that there is something there. And we just use the rest of the time to kind of clean some of these things up. I'll just fix this up and up, and I think maybe we can look into some of the other issues that uh, you know we want to fix as well. We have reached a, a, a pretty good stage. We actually got a game that is running. It actually has not just the mechanics, but it actually has a backend integration as well. And I think that's actually pretty good for 12 minutes. So hopefully this has been useful. And let's just fix this last error here because I, I don't really like the game to have errors if we're going to be distributing it. I'm pretty sure this is because the query assumes that the player is there. And yeah, so I think it says limit one rather than single. So this means that it will handle uh, a chance that the, there's, there's, there's no score in the back end. But I, I believe that will fix it. So let's try this now. Uh, play as guess. Yeah, everything looks fine. Cool. All right, everyone. And there we have it. We managed to get the game of Snake running. But more than that, we were also able to get the back end component installed. But more than that, we were able to get the back end component integrated such that we were able to also allow the player to log in and then submit their scores onto a global leaderboard. Now, I know we didn't manage to get to the rest of the features, such as deploying and also getting Google off going, but I think what I'll do is that I'll finish that up and then create a subsequent video just so that it's beneficial for everyone. Well, I had a lot of fun making this video, and if you'd like to see more, or if you have any suggestions of other games that you want to see created, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.